Kevin Harvick, Paul Menard in the front row, bringing the field to the green flag. The Brickyard 400's underway. Two by two. Fighting for position. Harvick has the advantage as he goes into one. Kevin Harvick will break free of the field and he will break into the clean air. That'll lead Paul Menard to race side by side with Joey Logano. Coming to Ford's racing there. As they stack up further back, Harvick gets the break and set sail for the first time off two. Joey Logano gets the help from Clint Boyer down the back straightaway as they go by Paul Menard. Now Brad has lasted to the outside of a 21 car down here into turn three. The field drives down into turn three for the first time. Paul Menard clearing Kurt Busch in the three. You see how they lined up on Paul Menard on the outside. Kurt Busch trying to go with him. That's opened the door for Jimmy Johnson to drive underneath Kurt Busch in turn four and hit the three. Smoke rolling out of the 41. An issue for Daniel Suarez, who was fighting to be in the playoffs, and the caution comes out. It looks like there's damage on the right side of the car. Looks like there's damage on the right side. Right here is William Byron. He gets up the track, and right behind him, the 41 of Daniel Suarez. The first contact looked okay, but then it kind of pulled the right front end. This is on board on the helmet cam. Watch this. You're trying to carry the momentum, trying to stay in the gas. Just, oh, you saw the second hit. The right rear hit, it wasn't that bad. It pulled the right front end, and then instantly it filled the cockpit with smoke. That is big trouble for a playoff contender. He was running 22nd. Whoa, oh, double right turn here. number one. Hard contact for Ryan Blaney. Make that another car. Slamming into the outside wall. They All come right. into turn Go number two. It's up, Landon up. Castle. Landon Castle just pile drives the turn one safer barrier, and he rides the wall all the way through one and all the way through two. And you see very slow to get out of the car is Landon Castle. But a huge hit by Landon Castle here. Speeds upwards of 190 miles an hour when they enter the turn. Rick, he came, he came off the end of the front straightaway, and then hard shot into the barrier. Something let loose on the right front, probably a tire going down there, right in front of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Landon Castle at this point, along for the ride and into the wall. Wow, what a hit. That's the most violent hit that I've seen in a long time. At the end of the front straightaway, almost max speed around this racetrack. Hard angle into the wall. Keselowski and Jones into the outside wall, and Brad will slam hard into the inside wall. Massive, massive collision for Brad Keselowski, who makes just a hellacious hit into the inside wall off turn two. And it looks as though that car is sideways, maybe up on top. Yeah, it's up on top of the tire barriers. So Brad Keselowski, you see the window net is down, but hard contact for the two and Brad Keselowski into those tire barriers. He's going to try to climb out of that car. And he hops up. But Eric yeah. Jones also involved in this one. There's Roger Penske. Gave the thumbs up saying he's out. There's Eric Jones climbing out of the car. From the highest you can have highs, he just won at Darlington last week, to now not even getting to the end of stage one at Indianapolis. Talk about the speeds here in Indianapolis. Look how short the back of that 20 car is. And look at the two of Brad Kozlowski. One stage in and already two huge accidents here at the Brickyard. Let's take a look at what happened here. Looked like Kyle Busch was going by the two car, and then Eric Jones tries to feel the hole, and Brad, oh, it's very tight right there. Brad coming down the 20, trying to get in that position, and it took all the air off the right side of that 20 car. Eric Jones getting a little bit loose there underneath the two. The passenger side contact for that two getting up under the tires. Actually, think those tires were very well placed. That wall is kind of an opposite angle. So while it looks very dangerous up on its side like that, I think that protected Brad from hitting kind of a negative angle against a very solid wall. This is another view. Look at the 20 with a huge impact. And then the two slides across the left side right here. And as I mentioned, those tire barriers, Jeff, why, you know, they look vicious. I think they have to be softer than the concrete wall behind them. Yeah, you know, normally tires, you know, there's a problem with tires, but in this case, I mean, yes, it put the car on its side, but 
Look how fast they're still going. This impact right here, you would think would have slowed the car down more, but as he turns and goes across the racetrack, it is rolling. I mean, he's still flying. Hits that wall. It absorbed a ton of impact. Yeah, that was a about huge hit. Yeah, we talked about the two car, but also the, the fuel cell and safety in the back of that 20 car. To keep that car from catching fire, pretty amazing. 20, 30 years ago, that car would have been in flames. And so stage one is going to end under caution, meaning Joey Logano will get a playoff point for winning stage one. The guys that were fighting for positions and trying to get as many points as far as stage points go, Newman and Johnson are going to finish fifth and sixth in this stage. So both gaining points. We got Big trouble league. on the back straightaway. Trouble on the back straightaway. The 18 car of Kyle Busch. Who going up in smoke. I don't know if he's got a left front tire down. Oh, no, that's an engine failure right there. Big engine failure in that car. Fire under the hood at 18. He was just on pit road, so that was coming off of pit road, getting back up to speed, going down the back stretch, and now all of the smoke. It stays green. Green flag pit stops continue to cycle through. That's the big key. It stayed green. Jimmy Johnson currently second. Be a huge break if he could get a yellow. He has yet to make a pit stop. We see the 18. I think he got to the access road, though. Kept the fluid off the racetrack. Here he is coming to pit road. You heard Jill, Dale Jr. call it right in front of you, Jr. Yeah, just down the back straightaway. A lot of cars around him. Close the engine down the back straight away quickly to the access road. That's going to allow this, this race to stay under green. One thing these teams do, think about this. You think about this, guys. The 18 car, they know they're in the playoffs. They already had the regular season championship locked up. Maybe Toyota trying something different with engines today. Obviously, they don't build something knowing it's going to blow up, but maybe a little bit of an experimental engine in this car today. Well, a lot of smoke, and the caution has come out. Jimmy Johnson is up front when the caution came out. He, he's what a battle the 48 has put on. He's got a half track position. A few guys have already pitted, but a huge break for Jimmy Johnson. Green flags back out. Five laps to go to end stage two. And once again, a drag race going down the front stretch into turn one. Side by side for the lead. Kurt Busch trying to shove Larson past Harvick. It won't work. Harvick will reclaim the lead. Larson quickly snapping back in line in second. And now they're side by side for third. Here comes Kurt Busch. He'll dive to the inside of Ryan Blaney. They'll race that way off too. Harvick claims the lead easily down the back straightaway, trying to break the draft on the 42 of Kyle Larson. Both of those guys driving away from third place, Ryan Blaney and Kurt Busch. Kurt Busch losing a lot of ground here on this restart, trying to get that momentum he's lost. Look at this chaos right here. You see Kurt Busch still having trouble. Jimmy Johnson going to make it three wide into turn four. Clears both of those guys. He sees points ahead. I mean, Kurt Busch is in trouble. Can you see how many spots he can get? A caution has come out once again. Easy on your tires. And there's been some debris on the exit of turn two. And so the caution came out with just four laps to go. You see it looks like a little piece of metal out there on the track and anything that could potentially cut a tire they've got to throw the caution for us. and this is officially the finish of stage two. So it will be the green and white checkered flag for the four of Kevin Harvick. Green flags back out in the air. Harvick on the outside. Larson this time with a better restart. On the inside, they make contact into one. And they come back into the corner, leaning on each other for a moment. Larson down low. You've got Harvick topside, and they're lined up two and three wide behind. Further back, Jimmy Johnson. Three wide to the inside. Johnson goes around hard into the wall. Kurt Busch is there. Paul Menard is involved. Others are trying to avoid right, Jimmy Johnson whose playoff hopes have just ended here at lap 104 in the Brickyard 400. Yep. Just set the stage. He's going to take more than points. Brandon, is with you, okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just curious why we were in that position. There you have it. Jimmy Johnson was down at the bottom of the racetrack, and there was a lot of competition for the position he had. Back up through the gears they go. Green flag back in the air. Harvick on the outside. Logano a good push on the inside. Door to door into one. Side by side for the lead. Nine laps to go in the brickyard. Logano fender out in front in turn one. Harvick at his right elbow in turn two. Logano drives deep into the corner. Harvick is there. They have a three-car length breakaway.
way over Bubba Wallace, and they still are side by side for the lead. Harvick, Logano side by side. That's going to slow him down. What is Bubba Wallace going to do? He's going to have a huge run down this back straightaway. He's on the outside. No, he doesn't have the run to be able to get alongside of him. Side by side for the lead through turn three. Harvick takes it. All day long, Kevin Harvick's had that move. That's worked for him all day. Did it again. Bubba Wallace over to take advantage right in the middle of this battle. 16 years since Kevin Harvick won here. He's won the Brickyard once before. Joey Logano just behind him, also very hungry. Bubba Wallace having a career run here in Indianapolis. Daniel Suarez back into one. He's closing in on Austin Dillon. And to Jeff's point, Suarez needs help. Whether it's something happening to Newman's car, Denny Hamlin or Chase Elliott catching him. Right now, you got Suarez making up a little bit of ground on Austin Dillon, but he's got to make up a whole lot more with less than five to go. He's only six points behind Ryan Newman. He's going to have to pass more cars. Newman's going to have to lose positions. Time is running out. Five laps to go. Coming to four to go this time by Kevin Harvick. 2.2 seconds out in front of Logano. You see right here, the pressure is building. Daniel Suarez knows that his time is, is going away right now. There's not much he can do. The only thing he can do is hold for the mistake, keep the pressure up, trying to get by with Austin Dillon in front of him, one lap at a time, but those laps are going away. But the pressure for Newman is building as Denny Hamlin has got to his bumper. Do I just wave him by and let him go? I have to left four more positions. So right here, he can't afford to get bottled up, Mike. He can't lose momentum. Denny Hamlin opened up the inside line and won, and that held up Newman just a moment. And now Newman will lose that spot to Denny Hamlin. It's now five between Newman and Suarez. And we heard Newman get out of the throttle, and that's allowed the nine to Chase Elliott to close in on that six car. He's going to have to get defensive on that nine car. Chase Elliott behind him. Suarez still not able to get up to the back of Dillon to charge for that position. Here, Newman got out of that gas, did not want it. Inner turn two side by side with the 11 of Hamlin. They want to lose that momentum. As you said, that is going to make him play tons of defense with the nine car. And the four of Kevin Harvick, now with just three laps to go, has checked out on Joey Logano. Three and a half seconds lead already for Kevin Harvick, looking for his second yard. Kevin Harvick now on the left. He races off turn number two. Further back, Newman and Suarez are separated by a short straightaway for Suarez. That must seem like a thousand miles with less than three laps to go here at the Brickyard. Brian Newman's hoping that there's no caution, nothing to break the stride. The three is pulling over. Austin Dillon looks to be pulling over and allowing the 41 to go by and take the position. That will put Suarez four points out of the playoffs. How's it? Very, very gracious move by Austin Dillon to reach out to Suarez and give him that spot. Now, Suarez, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Can he make something happen? I don't think there's enough time without some help, but that little bit of help was certainly an opportunity for Suarez. Well, the help is the nine of Chase Elliott. If the nine can catch the six and get the six of Ryan Newman to lose momentum, the 41 is close enough. He could attack. Two laps to go, less than five miles for Daniel Suarez. The 16th playoff spot still on the line. Elliott, Chase Elliott not able to close on this six car. Ryan Newman comfortably ahead of that nine car. Down the back straightaway, coming to the white flag. Daniel Suarez doing everything he can to catch the 21 in front of him. Time's going away. This, this guy in this six car, Ryan Newman, he's built for this. He doesn't mind the pressure, he likes the pressure. Very, very he is rising to the occasion. One lap to go, presented by Credit yeah, One Bank. Two and a half right miles right right around right the Brickyard. Kevin, the 16th spot still up for grabs. Kevin Harvick is already leaving turn two. Meanwhile, Daniel Suarez trying to put as much pressure on Paul Menard as possible. It could be too much, too little, too late. Suarez and Menard race their way off turn two for the final time this afternoon. Suarez closes in. This is pretty close. I don't know. He might have an opportunity to try to get a position here, but still not going to be enough. And making the final turns here. At the historic Brickyard, Kevin Harvick has won before. He's going to win again. Kevin Harvick wins the Brickyard 400. Brickyard 400, baby. Awesome job, guys. Great job. The whole team's on the wall behind him. Kevin, you put on a show today. Congratulations. You have won the Brickyard 400 again. Yeah, this is great. Just uh, got to say thanks to all the fans. Can't tell you how much. Uh, yeah, that's great. 
how much uh, coming to Indianapolis means to me as a kid. I watched Rick Mears uh, win, win Indy 500s and, and uh, got to be around him as a kid, and he was my hero. So coming here and winning here is pretty awesome. Before you kissed the bricks, you saw your whole team climb down here. What do these guys mean to you? Well, I mean, they just they built a great race car. Just got to thank everybody from... Um, hey, buddy. Son Keelan joining them. You're going to wear that or can I wear it? Okay. That must mean my hair looks bad. <laughs> Brought me a hat. But I uh, just can't say enough about everybody on this Mobile One Ford Mustang. Um, you know, these guys on this race team, they, they built a heck of a race car. Uh, this is the same stuff that we, that we took to Michigan and... and uh, had a real good weekend there, obviously, and, and went to Victory Lane. And uh, so to come to here to, to the Brickyard, I know how much this means to Rodney and, and Dax and all these guys that work on this car because we've been so close uh, to winning here before.